What's up everyone, Scott the Trout Hammer here. Welcome back to the channel. First time out fishing in 2024 and hey, just, just take a look at that. Just soak that all in. Yeah, look at this weather being all cute and springy like it didn't just try to kill us with ice two weeks ago. So the calendar says things have changed, but as far as fishing is concerned, nothing has changed. We're still very much in trout season here in the Willamette Valley, especially brood trout. So we're at a local spot here in my hometown, hoping to fish for some brood trout, maybe some stalker trout. I didn't see anything on the stocking schedule, but they don't always show that. Sometimes they just have a surplus and throw them in and say, hey, surprise, big fish. So we'll give tips and tricks along the way, stuff that'll hopefully help you be more successful fishing for the same species of fish. So we're gonna get some line wet looking for some doinks here, but if you haven't done so already, hit that like button for me, hit the subscribe button, and little notify bell next to and click all notifications, so you'll be the first to see all the great content that's gonna come from this channel. Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. Man, it's still morning at the start of February, and I might need to take the sweater off. So first off, what are we walking up to? Well, we've got some surprisingly clear water conditions for this time of year. I can see about four feet deep into the water, so color might not matter as much, but because we still got a little bit of stained water, still kind of muddy, I'm gonna use some colors that are gonna stand out, so I'm gonna start with chartreuse here. If I'm gonna use a lure, I'm gonna use something that has a silver finish on it because you know, even though the water is a little bit stained, it's not as stained as it usually is, but we've got barely a cloud in the sky and the sun's, you know, sun's coming up to the midday point here at this time of day. That silver uh, finish on a lure is gonna put off much more flash and be a lot more appealing to fish if they're willing to chase. So for bait, we're gonna use a four foot ultralight with four pound copolymer line and a size six treble hook. We're gonna put a dough ball on that guy. Now something I always recommend if you're gonna use this stuff for fishing, since you gotta use your hands and wad it into a ball, take some of this bright green healthy grass, if it's wet, even better and grind that between your hands, between your palms, get your hands all nice and green and smelling like a fresh cut lawn. That's gonna help just a little bit more to hide that human scent off of that dough. Perfect. There are scents and attractants in this stuff, but trust me, every little bit helps, especially with stock trout. They're used to the scent of human. So we're gonna take a wad about that size, roll it into a ball, and then press the treble hook into the ball, trying to cover the eye of the hook and I actually like to leave just one of those hook points from the treble hook exposed. It doesn't snag at all, honestly, when you're pulling it through any sort of vegetation, but it helps just a little bit more on the hookup. And the reason I picked this spot is because trout are naturally a river fish. They like to live in a current and we have an inlet here. That bubble line, that's gonna be our best friend. So we're gonna cast right on the edge of that bubble line. Bingo. Now I got that hook and that dough about two, two and a half feet from the weight. So we're kind of fishing a Carolina rig. We got the weight on the line that's allowing that power dough to float up and stay suspended from that weight. What I did not bring was a rod stake because I know the spot I'm fishing is rocky. Good luck getting a rod stake in that. So we're gonna employ Mr. Tree here to help us out. Let's kind of get ourselves wedged in there nice and secure. And then for the lures, we're gonna fish a two-fifths ounce little Clio with a purple, dark purple finish on one side and that silver finish on the other side and sort of a diamond pattern on it also. Fishing that on the Styx Finesse Stick. This is a seven foot six medium light rod and I've got 10 pound braid as a main line and six pound copolymer as a leader. So here, we're gonna cover water. See if we can get anything to show where they're at. Also lets us know how weedy or twiggy this area is. Hence already finding dead hydrilla. And I kept that pretty shallow, so that's not a good thing. Just means we'll have to switch to siwash hooks to stay through these weeds. And as I always recommend before you go fishing, check your regulations and make sure what you can use, how many hooks you can use, how many rods you can use. Here in Oregon, you can use two rods to fish standing water, but you need the two rod endorsement, which I get every year, just because this is the most successful way to fish a trout I found. One lure, one bait. Okay, yep, we need to switch to a single hook. And that's why you do this early, to find that out, if you need it or not. <laughs> and I need to take the sweater off, it is warm. So we'll switch to a silver and blue Paul lure with that siwash hook. Well, now I see some swirls like something swimming around out there.
Oh, that was Hydrilla. Now let's actually try on the other side of the bait. Here's this little pocket right here. Bait's pretty much been in the same spot for 15 minutes to no change, so we'll redeploy. Go out on the further edge of that bubble line over there. Yeah. And it'll give us more of that current to toss a lure into and see what shakes out. And I'm not gonna give this lake a whole lot of time. I haven't seen anything happen, even the guys that are fishing over there off the stage. I haven't seen anyone catch anything in the time I've been here, so I'll probably give this another half hour before I maybe move to a new place. Like I said, it's called angling, not catching, but kind of hard for the catching part if there's no fish. You know what? My gut is telling me to just go with the relocation idea. So, relocate we shall. Locatio Switcho, and here we are. I just told you guys ultralights are magic. So here we've got much dirtier water than the last place, so color selection is gonna matter a lot more. You want something that's gonna stand out in this muddy water. TLDR, sticking with chartreuse. How deep is that? Not deep enough. Bring in a few feet. There we go. Now, honestly, I didn't want to fish this spot again because uh, last time I was here, I spent three hours just getting taunted by a brood trout. But when you have a day this nice in February in Oregon, the fishing spots are going to be slim pickings. I'm actually gonna switch to a chartreuse two inch curly tail grub on a 132nd ounce jig head with a little crappie nibble on the hook. Because it has worked too many times to not use it. I'm gonna give this one a slow retrieve because I got a current that's gonna help me. Yeah, the current's gonna help create most of the action on that curly tail grub. I'm just gonna retrieve it slow so it stays lower down in the bike column. We are on. There we go. Told you. Two inch curly tail grub. I actually thought I bumped bottom on that one. Didn't think that was a fish. And yep, pretty sure that's a brood trout. So, yep, loosen the drag. Let this fish get tired. Oh no, I think that's just a trophy. That's a trophy fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I love fishing for these things on the ultralight. Four and a half foot ultralight, two pound line. Buckle up, enjoy the ride. It makes small fish feel big and big fish feel like a carnival. Ah, missed. There we go. And this might be one of those rare scenarios where I could just release the fish in the net. And yeah, that is what I'm talking about. Look at that beautiful rainbow. <laughs> Off you go. Yes. 
Oh, that felt so good. First fish of 2024 in the books, and it was a dandy. About two, two and a half, three pound trout, somewhere around there. All right, listen to my gut, and it paid off. And where there's one, there's many. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the official two inch curly tail grub YouTube channel. You're clearly not pulling your weight, power bait. You're usually the star of the show. Yeah, like I said, situations like this, so many things matter. You don't just throw everything you have at them. Color, action, scent, retrieve, it all helps out. And that's what I try to teach, is to help you guys be as successful as possible. Now, if we can just find that brood trout that just spent three hours flipping me off last time I was here. Hey, I'm over here. Hey, I'm over here. You can't get me. Okay, so what did that tell us? This whole point of this fishing system I call the trout hammer system, where you fish with two rods, two different presentations, two styles, two actions, two colors, two scents. What did that tell us? Well, one, it told us they want chartreuse, so we've at least already started matching the color. And we had a very healthy, very active fish that was willing to chase. So we'll, leave, we'll just leave the bait rod out there as the bait that it's on, because that's clearly going to be the best option for bait. But we're going to focus on fishing lures because we got active fish that are willing to chase which is actually pretty typical for winter and we're kind of we're kind of getting closer to spring early i mean you know some some muskrat on the east coast didn't see a shadow so apparently we're having an early spring despite what the calendar says february has always typically been the coldest month in oregon even though we had that ice spell last month i think we're gonna get another freeze before it fully goes into spring but we'll see so one of the best things that gives you a really good advantage fishing a lure like this you know, in a current right now, and why I'm, I'm saying I'm retrieving it really slow, the current is causing that tail to kick, and that's producing all the action I need. The slow retrieve actually keeps it down in that lower area and allows me to allows me to keep it out there, semi-suspended, more visible for a lot of fish, enticing more of a bite for a longer period of time. Anytime you can equate less casts to more fish, you're doing it right. that doink stand here for a minute I think I just saw some doinking oh false alarm false doink well I think I'm gonna call it an afternoon I won't bore you guys with all the lure changes and cast and retrieve but I fished this spot for about another hour after I caught that one and haven't seen anything and haven't seen anyone on this lake all in the other spots catch anything and all the other spots are taken so don't really have the options to relocate so I think I'll just call it an afternoon. So yeah, it ended up being just a one fish vid, but I mean, catch like that, I'm not gonna complain. That is what the soul needed. So you guys have probably seen, I'm pretty much back in the swing of things full time. Videos aren't gonna be as frequent as they were like years ago, but I do have a lot more time and a lot more uh, desire to do this again. That last part was the key. But I wanna know what you guys thought down in the comments below. Hit that like button for me, click subscribe and click the notify bell next to it, click all notifications. So you'll be the first to see all the great content that's gonna come from this channel. More trout fishing, clearly, you know, bass fishing's right around the corner and this summer, we're really gonna start rocking and rolling. So I'm just gonna say thank you guys so much for watching and as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing.